cloud. Good, we're recording. The person who asks the questions is the one who controls the conversation, controls the, the selling process. You want to appear as the authority figure. Most people in sales sound like little boys or girls They say, Mommy, can I, can I have another cookie out of the jar? And if we approach the prospect in the traditional sense with uh, reading a script or, or giving a presentation, we sound like everyone else and the prospect has heard it before and can reject us. However, when we ask questions, we sound like the authority figure. You go to your doctor's office, what does he or she do? Ask questions. Yeah, you go to your lawyer with a legal issue. They ask questions. What's the pro? What is, what is the problem, Rudy? What uh, why? What brought you here? Did you get a letter from the IRS? God forbid, uh, something like that. Okay, you go to your accountant uh, or whatever. You when you go to people uh, because you have a problem or an issue, and that's the same thing in in sales. We want to ask questions, but questions by their very nature are not always comfortable. You know, just asking question after question after question. Uh, it can be a brace. Did we ever get to a prospect where we lost control and the prospect is asking all the questions? Yeah. Did you ever get stuck in that Q&A vacuum where they're just asking you questions, you're answering questions. Before you know it, 20, 30, 40 minutes have gone by. And then what do they, they'll say, oh, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. Uh, I'll talk to my wife, right? All those usual stalls. Who's really in control in a format like that? The prospect, right? The prospect. The prospect. So what we have to do is be, and just this is your takeaway, guys. You've got to be the doctor in the room. You've got to ask the questions. But asking questions, once again, are abrasive. And um, so what you want to do is ask questions with what we call stroking, nurturing, and empathy. Remember those three things. When you ask a question, you, uh, you might say, um, you know, uh, you might ask permission as we do in the first step in guts is called the agenda step. Rudy, Phil, uh, Lou, and Maggie, can I ask you a few questions so I can find out maybe I can help you sell your home, buy your home, uh, invest in a home. Maybe I can help you solve your problem. By the way, what is the problem? Why are you selling this home? Why don't you stay in it enough? And you can do things like redirection and things like that. You might have read about that or seen that in my videos. On that, so we have to learn to ask questions with <laughs> bless you or nurturing, um, uh, and sometimes empathy. The empathy part is what's going on in their mind. You have to reverse engineer things a lot, so that's why we don't want to sound like our competition. I had a real estate agent yesterday, and she said um, she's been doing real estate for years and she can't make any money. And I said, "Call me up like I've got a listing that expired." <clears throat> And she said, hello, I'm with Keller Williams and I saw your listing expired and I'm reaching out to you today to, uh, to see if I could ask you some questions. Maybe I can help, you know, maybe we can, uh, I can list your property or something. And the person said, no, you're the 10th realtor, call me. Uh, send me your contact information, goodbye. <laughs> and she couldn't understand, you know, why people are treating her like this and why she gets this so such a high rejection rate. By the way, what happens when we get people who reject us, lie to us, or manipulate us all day long? How do we feel about that, Maggie? Awful. Awful. And when we feel awful, can we, can we, you know, the gurus all say, oh, you got to make all these calls and you got to do all this marketing. But when you don't, when you know people are not going to be nice to you, or treat you in a subservient way. How do you, um, are you gonna make those calls, truth be told? Nope. We don't wanna feel bad all day long, do we, Lou? Uh, absolutely not. So we've gotta change it, we've gotta stay, we've gotta be the doctor, the lawyer in the, in the room here. Who's got, who's got some uh, stalls or objections that they've heard um, in, their, in the course of their phone calls, their real estate calls? Does anybody have an example or a situation they've encountered? Well, I'm a realtor, and I get it all day long as well. What in what as in what aspect, Rudy? Calling them to do a listing, or what? what? Yeah, for sale by owners and uh, expired as well. Call me. Let me 
give me the traditional, just the way you sound. Let's see if we can, uh, we'll do it both ways here. You call me up. I have an expired listing. Okay. Hello. This is hey, Claude, Claude the high you, Hey, Claude, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. Who's this? Uh, this is Rudy Arthur with Realty Path. I'm just calling uh, because I noticed that your property went uh, off the MLS today, and I just want to know if, uh, if you're interested in listing again. I don't have my script on me, so this is off the road. This. We're not, that script is a dirty word. We're not allowed to use the word script. Okay. okay. You owe me a coffee now. Script is the worst, and if you do it twice, you owe me a beer and a coffee. <laughs> don't go for three because then it gets to expensive margaritas. <laughs> we don't use scripts. Before we do your role play, Rudy, and I'm jumping all over you, only because I want to help you. Why do I hate scripts? Because they're not part of you. I mean, they're just. I mean, what was the word you used for it? This. Uh... Why do we hate scripts? That repetitive verbiage yeah. that we that prospects here at all. When we get a phone, someone call us, and we know they're reading, or we know they're not speaking naturally, or they're reading off some kind of piece of paper. Why? Do we reject them so? Uh, what goes on in our head? Oh, here comes another one. Or, here comes another one. Is that respect towards you, Rudy? All the work no. and time you put into it. No, not at all. So you're you're already a dead man walking at the, within five five to fifteen seconds. You're gone. Yeah. You've been reduced. You're subservient now to that prospect. You are not Dr. Rudy now anymore. You're little Rudy, the five-year-old, asking mommy if you can stay up and watch TV on a school night. That's correct. You've totally lost it. Okay. <laughs> and, yes. and, and, that's, and, and that's the way it is. So I don't like scripts. Because I believe in innovation and spontaneity. And as a doctor, you want to be more like a scientist asking questions to find out their problem and make their problem worse, exacerbate it. And then it's like you have a neck, uh, you have there your, your little cough there. I have the same cough. I'm in the mountains here with the pine pollen. It's just covering the cars and the windows. And it's like you, you feel like you have a cold and it's just an allergic reaction. It's horrible here. So I'm in I'm, Utah, so it's, I'm, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I'm in Colorado here. I'm at 10,000 feet in Winter Park. It's the pine pollen. It's horrible right now. Plus, we got fires all over. You know, we got some big fires in Breckenridge, uh, by the way, uh, the other ski area down the road. Um, so we're all watching that. Uh, air quality isn't so great. So, but when we talk to somebody, I don't want you to read us. I don't want you to think about the the traditional script. And we use those scripts because we we're nervous and we don't know exactly what to say. I want you to be a little bit more. Um, free falling, um, a little bit more spontaneous, a little bit more inventive, a little bit more creative, uh, so that you don't do it. Let's go back in that role play again there. Uh, hello, this is Claude, the homeowner, who just uh, had an expired listing. Hello. Hey, boss, how you doing today? I'm great, man. Who's this? This is Rudy with Realty Path. Oh. I have, I, uh, I'm calling you, and I have a... Uh, no clue why I'm calling you, actually. Well, when you do, call me back. I'm busy. Well, um, <laughs> no, the I'm, thing is, is I'm a New Yorker. That's exactly what a New Yorker would do. <laughs> uh, is this about, I mean, I got your number in front of me, and I don't know if this real estate related. Are you selling a house? Were you selling a house or something like that? Well, uh, yeah, we did, and we had it in escrow, and it, the whole thing fell apart because we didn't get a pre-qualification. <laughs> And um, my wife and I are, uh, we're just going to hold off for a little while. Maybe, I'm thinking of maybe selling it myself. Uh, well, was it that bad of experience for you? Yeah, you because, um, mm -hmm. you know, we were going to move to uh, East Bumble, Texas. And uh, here we are stuck in, what state are you in, uh, Rudy? Utah. Utah, beautiful Utah. Rudy, we're here in bountiful Utah. Okay, or Salt Lake City or something. And uh, we were going to move to Texas because I have a new job waiting. And we uh, have the mover came and took all the furniture and everything already. And here I am in, in the middle of July or early July. And we need to sell this house. And you're like the fourth realtor to call me today. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about the, all the furniture. Where, where, where are you staying right now? 
I mean, well, uh, what, what actually, you... we're sleeping on an air mattress in the living room, and uh, and everything's on the moving van on the way to Texas. And we need, you know, we got my wife and I got job transferred, and and um, oh man, it's all it's hard. I so I got some signs up, and I got some people coming to look at it today. Okay, uh, would you be interested in me showing up with a buyer today to your house? You have a real buyer today? Yeah. Can I do that for you? I'm worried about you. I don't want you to be sleeping on the floor. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but I mean that kind of okay. That kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, if you got a buyer, um, yeah, I'll do a what's it called? Cooperative. A meeting. A, a uh, cooperative. A cooperative agreement. Um, yeah, I mean, I know you're at this point. You're you're all uh, uh, bombed about realtors and everything, but I just. Uh, I have an opportunity right now where I can show you a buyer. If it doesn't work out uh, with this buyer, I can uh, show you someone else. Okay, yeah, I come can, on I by. Can... I'll uh, come on by with your buyer today. Okay, I'll I'll be here all day. Bye. Okay, okay. that was good. That was a good try. You sucked me in with. Now, do you have a buyer? <laughs> I, I actually do. I have an account. Okay, wonderful. That, so you use that. You got your foot in the door. You're going to show up with your buyer, make a connection. That was really good. Round of applause for Rudy there. He was real brave. Uh, let me show you. This gut style. Okay, let's reverse the role here for a second. All right. Say hello. You're the buyer now. Okay. Hello? Rudy. Yes, sir. Mr. Arthur, you got a problem, sir. I actually do. How do you know that? I know because I read the MLS today and I saw that beautiful home on 121 Main Street. Uh, did not sell, and I, I for the life of me, I can't understand that. I, 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 you got a big problem, sir. We got the hottest real estate market I've seen in Utah in the last 10 years, and yours is the only house that didn't sell. What the hell's going on? I don't know. I mean, I guess I picked the wrong realtor for that. For and he did an awful job. Now my furniture is all the way, all the way to Texas. And okay, how would you like to talk to the best realtor in in Utah who will get your house sold in the next thirty days or less? I, I don't know. At this point, we're kind of disappointed right now. I don't blame you. So, like I don't blame you so. me. I you mean, got a hell of. Why are you selling this beautiful home anyway, sir? Because I have a job transfer. I have to be in Texas and now. <laughs> I was right. You got a major, you got a big problem, sir. A really big problem because you got a beautiful house in a great neighborhood. It's a good school district and that house didn't sell. You need to fix that today, sir. Would you like me to do that for you? It's okay to say no to me. What guarantees that you give me for that? I mean, why, why, why do you, why you want to? You want to oh, so you want to guarantee? If I could give you the guarantee, what would you say to me next, sir? Absolutely, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? I didn't quite hear you. I hearing a yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, great. So we can get together. What kind of guarantee would you like? Let me get a pen. Let me get a pen and write this down. This seems important. Do you mind if I take notes? I know we're on a video call right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, well, the guarantee will be. I mean, I need this house sold within the next three weeks. So if I could guarantee that I could get it sold or get it in escrow in the next three weeks, what would happen next when I come over today? With I'll sign anything that you need have me to sign. I'll sign I'll I'll an agreement with you. I, uh, I can change my schedule around, sir. I can be there at 3.30 this afternoon. I might even have someone with me to show who might be interested in your house. Are we on the same page? Absolutely. Let's I'm do it. Mrs. Is there a Mrs. Rudy or a significant other? Yeah, and she's very pissed, man. I mean, she's even worse than me right now at this point. Okay, well, I can appreciate what you guys are going through. I'm going to be your doctor of real estate. I'm going to try to fix this for you, and we're both going to win. Is that okay? That's absolutely great. Mrs. Rudy going to be comfortable with this decision you're making right now unilaterally? Yes. What? We'll be there to sign. Yes, she will be right there signing papers if, it gets, if it's a good I'll deal for us. I'll see you at 3.30. Boom. Okay. Forget about my personality and, and jokes and things like that. What did I just do in that? That was a great role play, by the way, Rudy. Nice going, man. Thanks. You were real good. Um, what did I, what was the first thing I, what's your guys' takeaway from that role play? What was kind of the first thing I did right away? Did I skip over the whole bonding and rapport and let's tell fishing stories? What did I do in the very beginning? You, you jump into solving the problem, into put, putting me at an ease because I was upset about the whole situation. What did I, what did, what did I, what did I say there? 
Maggie, Pedro, who else is on here? What else did I say? First thing I said, you have a problem. Yeah. Why do people, why do, you know, who, who remembers the million dollar rule besides Lou? People make decisions emotionally. Emotionally. And they make immediate business and social decisions emotionally. What's the emotion that I had to raise with Rudy in that role play? <clears throat> Gotta find his needs and greeds. Yeah. What's his motivation? Him and his wife are moving. They're transferring. They're sleeping on the floor. They don't have enough money to buy another house, whatever. We've got to find out the problem. I don't want to be cast uh, as a generic realtor or investor in yeah. sales. I want to be the specialist. I want to be the authority. I cannot allow them to relegate me to some subservient position. I am not the waiter. I am the owner of the restaurant. Okay. I, I have to change the, the, the whole paradigm, the whole uh, understanding of how we're going to do business in this thing. So do things a little bit differently when you're, when you're going and try, if you can find the problem. And how do we find the problem? People, we have to find that EQ. How do we find the problem from people? We have to find it, create it, or exacerbate an existing problem. Those three. If they have no problem, and their one through 10 score, the barometer that I always talk about, if their score is very low, a two or a three, and we cannot increase it, what should we do? <coughs> create it. Say again? This is create the problem, right? I mean, if you well, can't. Let's say we can't. Uh, we cannot get them over a three or four. We tried to find a problem, create a problem. There's nothing there. We fire them. We fire them. Somebody fire me. Let me hear somebody fire me. I'll be the, bu I'll be the buyer. I'm hearing crickets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Come, this is audience participation. You're not allowed to sit in the background and do your laundry. <laughs> you only learn by practicing. Seriously. It's you good. learn by practicing with me and making <laughs> real phone calls. Somebody fire me. Lou, jump in here. Lou, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to do anything right now. We're going to hold off for a couple of weeks. We're going on vacation. You're the fourth realtor to call me. Um, but um, just send me your contact information. Great. You know, uh, Claude, do exactly that. I think you should go on vacation. Um, you know, it's uh, – it's very important. I understand that. I, I understand that selling your home is really not that important uh, at this point. So, uh, well, it's important. I just we just need a break right now, Lou. Well, you know, uh, you need a break. Uh, when, when I thought you you had some problems. <clears throat> you're saying you're having you're having a big problem, uh, and you don't want to do anything about it. I know you want to take a break, but I'm the guy that's going to fix the problem for you. And if you don't want to take care of that today. I, I think that we should call it quits. I think, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. But, um, um, can you send me some contact information or at least so when I get back from vacation, maybe, maybe I'll look, maybe I'll look you up. Listen to my words. Maybe I'll look you up. <clears throat> well, maybe you'll look me up, Claude. And, you know, Claude, I'll, I'm a busy guy. Um, sorry, guy. Uh, I think you need to find somebody else at this point. And, okay. Uh, good luck to you. Okay. Okay. Don't be nasty now. Be, be, <laughs> leave, the, leave the barn door open a little bit here. Okay. Okay. Say, Claude, I understand what you're going through. Be, be empathetic. I'm just not in that frame of mind to make a decision. I've just uh, my, my, I just wanted to buy a house or sell a house and it, it fell apart. I'm lashing out at you. What do people do when they have a bad day and a stranger calls them? What do we do? I'm going to lash out. We <laughs> lash out at them. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Okay. He's a good guy. He's just had a bad day. Okay. How do you, so you want me to leave the barn to... door open? You're going to fire me, but leave the barn door open a little, maybe even create an incentive. Hmm. Okay. So Claude, you said that you, you, you give me a call back when you, uh, when you get back from vacation, I think it's very important that you take a vacation, take a break. 
really. Um, when you have a, when you, when you get back, when you, when are you going to get back? By the way, are you? Uh, I'll be back uh, in Friday in two weeks. We're um, we're going to uh, Bountiful Utah for the Chipmunk Festival. Okay. If I can solve this problem for you in two weeks, I'm going to have a Chipmunk you. Festival in Bountiful Utah. <laughs> I don't know. They have Groundhog Day in um, in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. So. And I'm a chipmunk or a rabbit. <laughs> okay. All right. How about I call you back in about two weeks, and if I can't, you know, uh, I'll have a. If I can't solve that problem, if you're if you're not ready to go at that point, then uh, won't we just say goodbye? Okay. But leave the door open. I might have a buyer for your, but I do have buyers for your house. Why don't we talk at two thirty next Friday? Be specific and stuff like this. Take a vacation, but I think I have a couple solutions for your problem. I might even have a cash buyer for your property. I don't know if that's important to you. Let's talk 2.30 and Friday in two weeks. There we go. There we go. So we don't, we don't, okay, we say fire them. We're not really firing them. We're just kind of trying to turn it around. Yeah, we'll turn it around, save it, but you call the shots here. You have to be the doctor. You have a waiting room full of patients, You okay? You have to be where your time is valuable. And, but you, the guy is right now, he's not going to do business. So you, what you do is you set it up for maybe a future or a follow. How important are follow-ups in our business? My rule of five is we got to speak to new people every day, at least five new people. If you want to make money and be successful in this business, those five people, maybe there's nothing there today. we have to fire them or whatever, but they know we know they're coming back from vacation or they're going to be in a better mood next time or they have a problem, but they're not ready to deal with it today or you're getting voicemails. How important is it to have a system of follow up? Well, it's important. It's everything. Follow up. With all the money is in the follow up. I guarantee you the person who says no today could be a maybe tomorrow and a yes the day later. I've seen people come back to me years later. Mm -hmm. Just because I followed up with them, I sent them an email or touch base with them. I use, um, and if you guys know, I use, um, I use a very basic system. When I t the people I talk to every day, um, and I know Lou knows this, I use a very simple Sharpie pen and a composition book. I write my notes. I write a date every day on this book. I write down all my notes, the people I spoke to, their phone number, their, anything that I think is pertinent, pertinent information about their property, their situation. I then take my okay. notes and I take a picture and I put it into Evernote. And then if I give them a score, let's say they're a five and I want to call a five, maybe I should call them in 30, 45 days. I put the picture in Evernote. I put in the tags okay, or the meta tags, the, uh, the links. So, and then I put in a follow-up schedule re calendar reminder. So I get a little notification across my screen or on my phone that says, call up John and Mary Smith from 45 days ago. And then I have my notes in front of me. Is it easier to, to reset when you're following up with somebody? How much easier is it when you have notes and you can say, hey, we spoke about it a month and a half ago? Yeah. It gets easier and easier when you're familiar with people and you save your notes. Real quick role play. Lou, uh, Claude Diamond here. We spoke about 45 days ago. You were going on vacation and your house fell out of it. You remember me? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I remember. Well, my wife said the same thing this morning. I woke up next to you. She said, who are you? You know, it's amazing. <laughs> Listen, you got to, my notes here say you're moving. Uh, you've got your furniture already in storage. You're sleeping on an air mattress and everything. Uh, your dog Spot is really upset. You've got your three. You got three kids and one on the way here. My notes say. Oh boy, yes. Is that? I mean, it is Utah. That's a Utah joke, baby. <laughs> big families in Utah, right? Yeah. Very right. big families. Uh, so, uh, Lou, uh, I wanted to talk to you about your property. I think I have a few solutions for you. Really? Okay, I'd love to hear them. Boom, I'm in. All I want to do is get in, get familiar. So you got to have a follow-up system also when you're speaking. You guys want to get so busy and have these conversations every day with people 
if you have, if you talk to enough people, finding deals as an investor, <laughs> or as a realtor, or as a consultant, or mortgage lender, whatever you do in real estate, you've got to get set up a system where you're speaking to enough people and you're not sounding like all the other clowns who called before you. You've got to sound more professional, um, more direct. You've got to get to the point early, throw away the script, forget about the presentation, about the history of real estate. Just talk about their pain, their need, their desire, their greed. Get right to it as quick as possible. It's okay to do a little, you know, the, the bonding and rapport, but we tend to waste too much time. How many of us have talked, I got on the phone with somebody, talked about football scores, and then 20 minutes later, we found that they didn't have the money or they weren't the owner. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm guilty of it too. Time is the difference between the, the 1% that make a lot of money in real estate and the 99% that get frustrated and bored and everything else is about the 1% work smarter. They're more focused. They work harder and they're more original. They think on their feet. They're more spontaneous. You want to invent different openers that get their attention. We're fighting for attention at all times. Isn't that right, Pedro? Pedro, you gotta be listening to me. Turn your head. He's okay. <laughs> we like audio, we want, I guess he can't hear me at all. It's, it's like, this is the Rudy Luke Quinall show here right now. <laughs> okay, good. Um, let me throw this back. Any of you guys have a question or something like that? Um, you can put it, uh, if you're having trouble uh, using the audio here, you can put it in the chat room, unless you're, dr unless you're driving <laughs> or something like that. Does anyone have a question on a role play or a stolen objection they have experienced in real estate? To me, the biggest problem is the openers. How, how do I get in there like you did? I mean, the, the beginning of the call, that's the main thing for me. That, that. Sure. Um, I love my first, my first one is, I, I love my first one. Rudy, say hello. Hello. Rudy, you got a problem. Oh, I do? Yeah. Rudy, I, I part, uh, excuse my abruptness, Rudy. My name's Claude Diamond. I'm a local realtor. I could not believe what I saw today on the MLS. How come that beautiful home on Main Street didn't sell? That's one I'd like to use. You've got a problem. Rudy, uh, let's do another one. Say hello. Hello. Rudy, uh, is this Rudy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's me. How can I help you? Well, I don't know. How can you? You call me. Yeah, you're right, sir. Very good. Um, I, I got your name and number here on a. I got a post-it here with your number on it. Um, and uh, I forgive me. I get so many call. My I'm a local realtor, investor, and consultant. You might. You don't have a problem in real estate today, do you? That you want solved? I actually do. Tell me about it. My house didn't sell. See, we're boom, we're in it. You got to do something that he's never heard before. If I got a guy, hey, why am I calling you? Is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Well, you called me, you know, boom. I'm entering, even if you get mad at me, I'm inside. Okay, these are called pattern interrupts. These are, uh, I call them guts moves. Do something completely different than no. What is the average person who says, Hi there, I'm Re Keller Williams. I'm reaching out to you today. Boom. They already, in five seconds, you've shot yourself in the foot. I <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, hear from James Castro. I got the contract, and the seller says, I don't want to sell anymore after two weeks on the contract. Okay. Um, I would say, well, well uh, okay, and I can appreciate that. How come you don't want to sell the house anymore, sir? You don't want, I have several people that have inquired about your property. Is there a reason why you don't want to sell it? Originally, when you contacted me, you told me you were moving, you couldn't afford the house, you were behind in payments, you're getting divorced, you have a health issue. What has changed? To always turn a question into a... A question. A question. Make you were, Can you hear me? Yes, James, jump in. Oh, awesome. Um, so the seller, you know, he didn't tell me that he didn't want to sell the property, but the reason he told me that is because he had found another buyer uh, for the property who could pay a higher value than uh, what we had on the contract. Okay, but what's the purpose of your contract? Why do we do contracts? Um, I, I mean, I, I just did it to market 
uh, the contract to another buyer. I didn't know that. Okay, that's what you want to do. But what is the purpose of a contract? Well, it's a legal binding agreement. Binding. I love that word. Thank you, sir. You have a binding agreement. Did your contract allow him to unilaterally void the contract? Sorry, I sound like my, I put my lawyer hat on here. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I uh, because his attorney did look over the contract. Uh, his attorney? It, yeah, it, it's, he, he was talking <coughs> to me and uh, the person I was doing the deal with over the phone, and he told him that, you know, you couldn't get out of this contract until, uh, I think it was last year, August 8th, that we had the contract. We already had a buyer, and he decided like a week before we closed on a buyer that, you know, I don't want to sell anymore. Okay, what did you enforce? <clears throat> uh, to, uh, sorry to interrupt, but did you enforce your legal rights? That um, if you have a contract that says you have a right to sell a property at a certain price and you got a buyer, and he says, I don't want to sell it to you now, did you enforce your legal rights? To be totally honest, no. No, don't be honest. I hate you. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know anything about, you know, I was just getting started in real Okay, let's role um, play. I'll show you how to fix this real fast. You be him. We have a buyer, we're in escrow, whatever. And you say, Claude, I don't want to do this because I found somebody else who's going to pay me more money. Even go, let's role play that real quick. Okay. Um, so Claude, you know, I, I really appreciate the time uh, I spent with you. Uh, I know um, that you uh, wanted to buy my house, but it seems as though and I, I recently found someone who could pay a higher uh, That's what. For. That's wonderful. How much are you going to pay me, uh, James? And I appreciate you being so forthright, stroke, nurture. Uh, how much are you going to pay me today to release you from this contract and avoid, and avoid an expensive lawsuit and uh, my attorney filing a lease pendants on your property today? That's a cloud. Okay, can I get a recording of that part? Because I would definitely use it. But You'll get, um, everybody will get uh, a recording. His, I, I'm recording it. His James, suggestion would have been... Um, Go back in the role play. No, stick in the role. James, how much okay. are you going to pay me today to release you from the contract? Well, I didn't. I didn't know I had to pay you. What do you well, mean by that? You know, what, what am I going to? Hey, ignorance of the law is no excuse, as they say. Do you want to sell that? Are you going to make some money selling this contract to these other people who are paying you more money? Well, I never got an escrow uh, deposit from you, so. Uh, okay, now you're know. changing. Okay, hold on. Now you're changing. Yeah, you're changing well, that's what I was faced with. But you know, I I just really want to know how to resolve that because his main um, focus was that he didn't get the biggest escrow amount, and you know, just the company. That, is that relative to the contract? See, you're giving me facts or changing facts. All I know yeah, is yeah. all I know is that you have a contract that says that you have exclusive rights to buy or sell this property during a given time period. If you do not enforce, and I've had people come to me and say, Claude, I want out of the contract because I found a buyer before you did. And I'll say, fine, how much are you going to pay me to release you from this contract? And so I then have a, I have a contract that protects me. That's the whole point of it. I can let the contract expire. There's usually, but maybe there's a couple months left in the contract, and they have a buyer now. I would then tell them that they can pay me to release them from the contract, and that's fine. Otherwise, if they go ahead and do the deal, that is a breach of the contract, and then I can file a cloud on the title and enforce my rights and call in Mr. Attorney. The purpose of the contract is to protect the your rights within the negotiation. So that's a legal issue. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but basically if you have a contract and you have time and they invalidate or breach that contract, you can enforce your rights. You have more power and you can very simply put a cloud on the title and stop them from selling it to anyone else and let the courts decide unless you settle out of court. Okay, anyone else? That's amazing, awesome. Okay. Got a, a little legal education in this role, in this sales <laughs> course too, don't we? Anyone have something for me? Otherwise, I'll move on here. Um, let's talk about closing. How do we close somebody? We set up an agenda. We do a qualification where we learn to ask questions that we spoke about today. Then we move to the close step. How do we close somebody? and keep them, um, remember the million dollar rule. We wanna keep them emotional. 
So we want to constantly, we're, what our goal is, is to find three to six. The more the, the, more, the better, mo better, as they say in Louisiana, we, the, or Hawaii, I think they say it too. And you want to find three to six needs, greets, pains, or problems, and constantly review those with the prospect, and then turn it into a question. An example would be, um, uh, Phil, um, if I could uh, put 5000 down and send you a contract today for the $150,000 price we negotiated and you, hold the rest of the, and you hold the mortgage for 36 months at 8% interest, if I send you that today so that you and your wife can move to East Bumble, uh, East Bumble Texas, what would happen next? No. I'm sorry, say again? I said I'd give you my email to send it over. Okay, and I'll send it over to you just as we discussed, and you're going to discuss it with your better half. And what happens when we speak at 4.30? Can we move forward today, Phil? Yeah, I don't see why not. Which means? Yes. What? <laughs> yes, Claude, you got a deal. Oh, okay, good. I'm good. He said, I didn't see why not. Is that a yes? Mm. What are the, that's a, that was a really good example, by the way. Thank you for using that. People say things, we hear yes, but what are they really saying sometimes? I don't know yet. I don't know, maybe, probably. You know, someone once said to me, Claude, I'm gonna give it my highest uh, attention and focus on that. All things considered, this looks like a great deal for both of us. I'm sure we can move forward. What did I hear as an amateur bus investor? Absolutely. I heard yes, but what did he really say? Not sure yet. Maybe. He said caca. He said nothing. <laughs> this is the way he got out. So you got to say what a lot or what do you mean? I'm not sure I understand. This is part of getting commitment in your clothes. Also, a time, did you hear the time frame that I used with Phil? Okay. I said, Phil, if I send this to you at uh, something like 3.30 today and you speak to your better half, what happens when we talk at 3.30? Always set up a specific never one of the things i always did wrong my biggest mistakes is i always left it ambiguous oh claude give me a call next week a monday or tuesday and then i'm chasing this guy monday tuesday leaving voicemails can't find him do are we all guilty of that stuff what's the better way to what's the better way to do it someone someone role play with me give me a specific commitment and example here i'm the buyer or seller whatever you want go ahead I'll be the buyer. Go ahead. Give me a commitment. Set up a commitment with me. I'm, I'm the buyer. I'm the seller. I'm the... You can be whatever you want. Just get a commitment for me for the next meeting, for the contract to be signed, monies to be trans. I want to hear specific closing commitments here. Hey, Claude. Uh, well, it seems like uh, if I send you all, uh, if I put an end to your pain today or your problems, uh, are you ready to be moving forward today? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could do that. Yes. Are you comfortable with everything we spoke about? Oh, very comfortable. Uh, give me a call later today or tomorrow. Uh, um, I, you know, my wife thinks you're wonderful, Rudy. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm sure after final consideration and review, um, we can probably do something. Okay. I'll be sending you the papers. I need a commitment from you today at 430. Will that work for you or 330 is better? Wow. Um, we need to do this today. Absolutely. Okay. Don't always. <laughs> okay. Always end a question with a question. With another question. Question and make sure you stroke or nurture or both. Me, Claude. I understand you're busy. Your wife's busy and everything. You came to me with a problem. I want to solve it. I'm very busy with other deals and we're, you know. And I need to know if we want to move forward. It's okay to say no to me. But at three thirty today. If that works, can we talk at 3.30 today and see if we can move forward or we're done? Is that all right? Okay. So yes. that's, that's the verbiage, the words you've got to use. Otherwise, you're playing this. How many people here have done this phone tag crap? Right. Back and forth and back and forth. How easy is it to lose a deal? You know when you get on that phone call and it's kumbaya and we're making s'mores and, it's a camp and everything is wonderful, we're on a honeymoon? And what happens when we get hold of them next Monday? You're gone. Gone it's like gone. a man. What's time? Is, here's your takeaway. Time is your friend or your enemy in business. B 
be specific when you're closing or getting commitments or new appointments or contracts signed. Be specific. And if they cannot be specific, take it away from them, fire them. You are the doctor in the room. You are the busy, you are the busy investor in the room. Do not let them diminish you or make you subservient to them. Let them know that they will have, they have the lottery ticket in their hand right now. And if they cannot be specific and give you a commitment, they're putting it in the shredder. Make sure you're prepared to fire them gently. Okay. It doesn't sound like, uh, you know, Rudy doesn't sound like you want to make a commitment today. And I understand it. Would you rather just say no to me and we don't do the deal and you don't move to Texas in the next 30 days? Tell me what you'd like to do. Cause I'm a little confused. Help me out. Uh, you know what, Claude, I apologize. Yeah, I'll move things around. I'll make it happen at 4.30 today. Uh, I'm sorry, when? Today at 4.30. Is, no, that, is that the time you said? I really appreciate you making that commitment, Rudy. It tells me a lot about your character and that you're a gentleman. And either way, at 4.30, we'll decide to move forward or we're done. Is that fair? That's, that's fine. That's, well, that's gut selling. Very good. Round of applause for Rudy there. That was great. That's what gut selling is about. Don't leave ambiguity stroke, nurture, review the problems that they give you while you're asking those questions and then give it back to them for the close. <clears throat> is this good stuff, guys? Yes, it is. You're not going to get this from Ron Legrand, believe me. <laughs> okay. This is the meat and potatoes of making money, of being sick. You can waste all the time uh, all the time on studying techniques and things, which is important. I'm not diminishing it. Your strategies, contracts, all that is good stuff. You can waste a lot of time on computer applications and hiring third parties and VAs and letters and doing a lot of expensive marketing. But sooner or later, you're going to get on the phone with these people and that's where the magic happens. That's where you monetize this stuff. This is the most important thing I can share with you. This is the thing that was missing for me in, uh, in real estate. I love when I first started in real estate, I loved real estate. I, I got as I, I was totally a sponge for accumulating different gurus and things like that. And, and I was doing deals, but I wasn't making money and I was getting really frustrated. And the thing that worked for me was this getting focusing, practicing, listening to other people who are really great in sales. <laughs> and this is what I do every day. It's why I love to teach because when I make my real estate phone calls, I crush it because I'm all warmed up from you guys. Thank you. It's the truth. It really, it's always about the sale. It's always about persuasion. Uh, I've recommended other books. Uh, has anyone here uh, uh, read uh, Cialdini, The Psychology of Persuasion and Influence? Okay, Cialdini, C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. -I. Oh, he's on YouTube too. Um, he's a professor of psychology, I think I was saying, Arizona State University. He's got a couple YouTube videos. Listen to him talk about the different means of persuading people. How do we get people to come over to our side, to like us, to trust us, to feel like they owe us? This is the psychology of the behavior of sales. It's the way we use our words. Has everyone seen the video of the blind man on the street? Change your words, change your world. It's on YouTube. Everything you need to know about success in business, in sales, and persuasion is in that video. Change your words, change your world. Okay, the lady changes the sign. All of a sudden, everyone's giving the blind man on the street money. Why? Because they became emotionally involved. It's so important to hit the emotional, psychological triggers when you're speaking to people. Oh my God, we're out of time. This is fun. Did you guys learn something? Yes, we did. Give me one take. Always. Give me one takeaway before we go. Well, so Rudy, give me one thing you learned today. Uh, nature for the closing. I mean, be be bold. Uh, get in there. Follow the agenda, qualification. But at the end, you have to close. Be specific with your time. Uh, the time frame. You're the one in control of that, not them. If you don't control that time, I mean, you're you lose them. Yeah. You lose them. And just a, a note, thank you for that. You really took, got a lot out of this, and that makes me feel good. It's about building your confidence so yeah. that you don't go in there like the, with the little boy, the little scared boy inside of you. 
you're going in there as an authority and you're saying, you have the problem, I have solutions and resources. When you become confident in the way you communicate with people, this business becomes very profitable and a lot of fun. Luke Quinall, what did you, what's your takeaway, buddy? <clears throat> uh, I would probably say it's, it's really controlling the conversation uh, for me at this point. Uh, uh, asking the questions, knowing what kind of questions to ask. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of things in between there when you're asking the questions, the stroke and, stroking and nurturing. Empathy. Um, that, that I try to, when I, when I talk to people, I try to do that, but I sometimes think, am I doing it too much? <laughs> and I don't really get to, uh, I don't get to the close. Because yesterday when we were talking, we were talking about getting to the close, and it was uh, totally foreign to me because I've never got to the close. I always get through the questions and, and then they, they go away, you know, and so I'm did not being... Do you ever see the movie Glenn Glory, Glenn Ross, the David Mamet uh, movie? And um, I forget his name, uh, the actor who plays Trump in Saturday Night Live. Um, yes, um, um, uh, Baldwin, Alec. Yeah, Alex Baldwin, he, he does the ABC on the chalkboard, always be closing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, always think about why am I in business? I'm in business to make money today, not to waste time with people. So good takeaway. Um, let's go to Phil. Phil, you got a takeaway from today. Um, yeah, I always get something, Claude. This is, uh, it just goes through and reaffirms everything that is in your steps. And um, a great way to regain control of the conversation is by asking questions. Yeah. Another way, just to share with you, if they ask you a question, you can also gain control by not answering a question. Phil, ask, uh, ask me a question. Why is the sky blue? Anything. Why are you wearing a white shirt today, Claude? You know, that's a great question, Phil. I was wondering the same. I don't know. Now, you must have brought that up for a reason. You're not looking to buy a white shirt today, are you? Yeah. Well, I don't know. You look pretty handsome in that one. Well, that's, I bet you say that to all the boys. Is it, It's not hot by where you are, is it? Yeah, it's warm today. Oh, you know, maybe that, maybe that's a, let me ask you something. It's a warm day today. White shirts tend to keep you cooler. If I could get you a, a, a really good deal with financing on a set, on a gross of white shirts, that's not something you're looking to buy today, is it? Um, no, not really. I didn't think so. I'm sorry. I even, yeah. <laughs> I even brought it up. So even if there was great financing and you would stay cooler and get these shirts for a considerable less money than Walmart, that's not something we should talk about, right? Well, yeah, I guess I guess so. If I can make a profit off of it, what? I'm, I'm always, sorry, what? Always open. A profit? Yeah, Claude. Oh. oh, okay. Boom. See, even white. It works with white shirts. Even real estate or white shirts, it doesn't really matter. Uh, James Castro, give me a quick takeaway. What did you learn today? James is not there. Maggie, unmute your. We're unmuting you, Maggie. What did you learn today? Um. Be the restaurant owner, answer questions with questions, make money today. I like that. Very good, Maggie. Uh, Pedro, I'm unmuting you, Pedro. This hey, Claude. Is... Hey, what did you learn today, buddy? Well, what I really like about you is, you know, how you stand out from the crowd, you know, how you initiate the conversation. I mean, if... okay, let me call my wife in here. <laughs> how come? <laughs> So I really, I really, I really like that, you know, so, I mean, it's pretty creative what, what you create there, so. so Sounds fun. good. Wonderful. I'm glad you all took something away. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Make five phone calls today. Talk to five people. Everybody go to the bank and have a, have a nice summer week, a safe summer weekend, okay? Thanks, Claude. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.